love lives here. So welcome once again, everybody. It's great to see more of you here in the sanctuary and more folks joining us at home. Good morning to Vicki and Marty as well. Good morning to Corey. Uh, Vicki asks, who are you wearing? That's what we're talking about today. Um, Currently, Vicki, I'm wearing Cook Street. That is the Aloha shirt that I'm wearing. So there you are. All right. So, my beloveds, today we are talking about who are you wearing. And but before we do that, we want to say our affirmation statement together. Yes, our, our focus statement together, rather. And so, because we're talking about who are you wearing, we're talking about it with the W's. So or double U's, whatever. W's, whatever. We're going to talk about it with the W's. So let's say our focus statement with all the W's. So what are some of the W's? We're going to say this with? Wonder. Wonder, Wonderful. Wonder us. Okay, we got all the wonders. Two U's. U's. Vacuum. (laughs) Because of two U's. The dull U. There you go. Wherewithal. Wow. (laughs) Willingness. Wildly, wisely, wisdom, okay, wholeheartedly, there we go. Begins with a W, it sounds like an H. The beauty of the English language. All right, here we go. We embolden people to live their highest potential through the transformative power of love. Yes, indeed we do. We embolden people to live their highest potential through the transformative power of love. Or shorthand, live your best life, right? Be able to to live their best lives, including everyone gathered here. That is our theme for this year, is live your best life here at Riverside Center for Spiritual Living. And we are currently in our spring series of living into the vision. And today, we're talking about who are you wearing? So aren't those fabulous people? Yes, yes. Right? Look at them on their red carpet runway, looking fantastic in their designer goods, their designer wares. Yes? Yes, yes, yes. All right. So, who are you wearing? This is what we are looking at today. So, red carpet season has kind of just finished. And you have all the people out there on the red carpet. You have the interviewers as everybody's going in, like, Who are you? Oh, it's so great to see you, such and such star. Who are you wearing? And then they always say whatever designer it is that they're wearing, right? Who are you wearing? And it's always some kind of a designer. And the thing is, my beloveds, is that you are wearing someone all the time. In fact, you, too, are a designer, You are wearing top name labels right now. It might not be Gucci. It might not be Prada. It might not be Ferragamo. You might not be kicking it in your Louis Vuittons, right? But you are wearing your own designer label right now, a designer label that you are so intimate with that you actually started creating when you were little. When you were younger, this is who you are creating yourself to be, who you have created yourself to be. These labels, these designer labels that you've applied to yourself, perhaps are such top names as Good Girl, Perfect Patty, Jackie the Joker. Good old dependable Dave, go with the flow, Joe. Or perhaps these labels that you have, that you are wearing are partner, spouse, leader, boss, parent. You see, these labels that we have are actually these personas, these masks, these roles that we've donned in order to function in our lives and likely to hide pieces of ourselves that we have disowned. We talked about disowned qualities a few weeks ago, did we not? 
We talked about disowned qualities, and we talked about the need to please and the need to be accepted. And what we learn from early on is we learn what is okay to be, how it's okay to act, and what is okay to be in yourself, in your being, and what is not okay. We learn what's not okay. We learn what's not acceptable. And then we begin conforming ourselves to the ways that we can achieve love, the ways that we can receive love, the ways that we can receive acceptance, the way we can receive approval from the surroundings in our life, whether it's our caretakers, our caretakers, uh, you know, our adult caretakers, or whether it's the institutions that we are part of, the schools that we go to, the religious organizations we participate in, what our family and culture is, what our larger culture is. We begin to fit into what is acceptable, what is not acceptable. We begin to put aside those parts of ourselves that don't fit in, that don't fit into the narrative. And then we begin to design these elegant suits, these elegant and beautiful pieces of armor that allow us to protect ourselves and to fit in. We construct these designers, these intricate, lavish designs that we're wearing, so much so that we begin to hide parts of ourselves. We begin to hide these bits and pieces of ourselves that are actually part of the whole. Remember, we talked about a return to wholeness, owning those parts of ourselves that we like and owning those parts of ourselves that we might dislike, those qualities in ourselves that we might dislike. And when we begin to own all of that, then we start to return to wholeness. We start to experience a greater sense of self-worth. But what we're talking about here today is what really happens or what happens in addition to those bits and pieces is that we construct these personas. And when we construct these personas, when we construct these roles, then we are separating ourselves, we are creating separation within ourselves so that we're no longer whole, but then it begins to affect our self-confidence. Begins to not only affect our self-worth, but it affects our self-confidence. And what is needed to live your best life, what is needed to live into your vision is a healthy dose of self-confidence. If we don't have self-confidence, it is next to impossible to step out and do the things that are required to do of you or to step out and step fully into a greater expression of yourself because we're hiding behind the persona, we're hiding behind the mask so that we are accepted over here. But what if hiding doesn't allow us to live our best life? What if that is what is stifling us? What if that is what is holding us back from living into the vision of being our most fully realized self? Because any time we start hiding behind masks, then we're learning not to trust ourselves. We stop trusting ourselves because we're not trusting that we are enough. We're not trusting that we are good enough, that we are whole enough, that we are perfect enough, that we are complete enough. And there is that part of us that deep down inside says, ah, you don't trust yourself. There's no self-confidence here. You're not being with yourself. You're not having faith in yourself. You're not trusting yourself. So why in the world would anybody else have any confidence or faith in you or trust you either? And why would the world look safe or confident or trusting? Why would I trust anybody else? I can't even trust myself. I don't have confidence in anybody else because I don't have confidence in myself. Remember, what we experience in here is also what we experience out here. Does this make sense? <clears throat> so we hide these pieces from ourselves and we hide these pieces from others and we try to control how we are perceived. We try to control other people's perceptions of us to make ourselves um, digestible, right, to other people, right? And a lot of energy is expended in holding up these masks and maintaining these personas and maintaining these goals. <clears throat> but there's payoffs that come with it, but there's a lot of energy that goes into it. 
some of the payoffs that we might experience is if I don't risk anything, then I will never fail. If I don't risk, I won't fail. If I keep these masks up, then I will be rid of Right? If I keep these masks up, then I can keep the persona up that I am a superhero. And that I'm here to save the world. I'm here to rescue. I, that's how I get my kudos. That's how I get my sense of value in the world. <clears throat> or maybe it's a we, the benefit that we get is by manipulating others to get what we want. Right? But these kinds of things great cost because of the amount of energy that it takes to maintain this. <clears throat> it's really zapping you and draining you of your life force, of your life energy, may the force be with you, of the ability to step into and live your best life because you're too tired. Man, I'm tired of being, trying to be perfect. Man, I'm tired of trying to be the good son. Oh, it's exhausting trying to keep this thought up that I got all my stuff together. Right? And we burn out. We run ourselves ragged. And when we're running ourselves ragged, there is absolutely no way we live in tradition. There's absolutely no way we can be living our best life because we're running ourselves ragged, trying to prove to everybody else <clears throat> that we're some kind of perfect person, that we're whatever that image, that persona is that we are putting up. So in order to begin to live into the vision, then we have to have self-confidence. Living into the vision requires self-confidence. And self-confidence requires that we trust ourselves. And until we release and let go of these falsities, these personas, it's nearly impossible to do so. It's really funny, folks, because you know, <clears throat> we want to be loved and accepted for who we are, right? I just want to be loved and accepted for all of who I am. And yet, if we are not willing to share and expose and make vulnerable and be confident in all of who we are, we can never be loved for all of who we are. It's a paradox. We want to be loved for who we are, but yet we're unwilling to show who we are. We keep the facade up, we keep the masks up. So what is the way to let go of, to begin to take off the designer wear that we've been wearing? What's the way to do that? Self-forgiveness. Self-forgiveness is the piece of where we can see ourselves and see what we've been doing, see the armor and the protection that we have donned ourselves, see the roles and the personas that we've donned ourselves as actually really ingenious ways that we have been protecting ourselves, that we have been um, lifting ourselves up, that we have been getting our needs met. We don't have to make it wrong, but we don't have to keep doing it either. We have the opportunity to realize that, wow, this was really helpful at one time to behave this way, to show up this way. And we can begin to forgive ourselves, to see compassion. We can begin to forgive ourselves for the mistakes that we've made, for the errors in judgment, for the poor choices that we've made, and for allowing our stinking thinking to get in the way, right? Those limiting beliefs, those limiting thoughts to get in the way. We can begin to allow ourselves and forgive ourselves for all of that. And the more that we begin to forgive ourselves, we allow ourselves to recognize that there is this beauty that is deep down. There is this wholeness that is deep down. That, wow, I was a jerk. I am sorry I was a jerk. Wow, I have been living my life on this perfection hamster wheel for far too long. I recognize that that what one time served me, it no longer does, so let me just set this down. Let me step off that wheel. Thank you for 
giving me guidance and for protecting me for the, all the years that you did, but I've got this now. We've got this. I recognize who I truly am. And that that perfectionism, yes, is part of me, but yes, it also serves. That all these pieces that I have disowned, they served at one time, or they serve me. They come in handy occasionally. But I no longer have to live at the effect of that. I no longer have to live at the effect of this persona that I have created. And through that self-forgiveness, we begin to receive, we begin to experience self-acceptance. Because we are no longer disowning parts of ourselves, we are now accepting those parts. We are accepting our mistakes for what they are. We are accepting our discombobulated pieces. We are accepting and we are encompassing and we are embracing and we are bringing it all back into the wholeness and the awareness of who we are. <clears throat> but owning it and living it and taking action upon it and living it openly is another story, right? There's the owning, okay, yeah, I own that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. So there's the, there's the self Forgiveness, there's a self-acceptance. There might even be a little bit of the self-trust there. But in order to really be able to live it, in order to be able to take action on it, that's where the self-confidence comes in. That's where the conviction, the self-confidence is there because in order to be able to live it, not just own it, but be able to take action upon it and to actually live it into the world, we have to be willing to be vulnerable we have to be willing to be strong. We have to be willing to accept ourselves without the fear of judgment. And that's really what self-confidence is. Think of the emperor with the new clothes, right? He was out there walking butt naked. But he was confident and he was wearing clothes, wasn't he? He was just out there confident, walking around. The emperor has no clothes. And he was walking around full of confidence that there was this inner confidence within him. Yes, he was fooled, right? But really, there's this inner confidence that's there that allows ourselves in all of our wholeness to be seen. And when we allow ourselves and all of our wholeness to be seen, our vulnerability to be seen, then we're no longer living in fear. We're no longer having to hide parts of ourselves. We're no longer having to hide behind the role, hide behind the mask, hide behind this um, fashion, this design that we've created, and we can live our authentic self, live from a place of authenticity, live from a place of self-confidence. What does confidence mean, beloveds? It means with faith, con, with, fidelis, faith with faith. So self-confidence is with confidence or with faith in whom? In self. And in this case, self is a capital S, self, meaning that it is a capital S, spirit, self. It is the truth of who you are. So we, when we walk in faith, when we live self-confidently, we are living in faith with ourself, fully trusting ourself, and it is only then, my beloveds, that we can really step into living our best lives. Step into living into the vision. Living into the vision, living your best life requires that there to be this self-confidence, that requires that there be this knowing, this faith within that says yes. Regardless of what's happening out here, I know that there's that within me that knows. I know there is that within me that guides. I know that there is that within me that makes the crooked places straight. I know there is that within that is the source and supply of all of my needs, of all of my desires, of all of every possible want I could ever have. And it already knows. And it's generous. And it provides. I just need to get this silly costume off and step into it and embrace and be enrobed in the truth of my being. Enrobed in the garment. 
enrobed in the truth. And then I get to walk self-confidently, self-trusting, self-accepting into the vision, into my highest and greatest good. And knowing that I don't do it alone, right? I say I here, it's not Jeffrey. That's not the I that I'm talking about. It's the I with a capital I, 13 font, italicized, you know, large, super large, bold, italicized font. The I that is within. That is who, that is what I am tapping into. That's where the self with a capital S, confidence, lies. So this living my best life, living in the vision, there's no fear of judgment. There's no fear of mistake. There's no fear of wrongdoing. I can always correct something if I don't like the path I'm going, but I don't need to fear it. Because I'm able to let go of who I've been wearing and step into the life that is waiting for me. Anais Nin has this really beautiful poem called Risk. And it's a short little poem. <clears throat> And it says this. And the day came when the risk to remain tight in a bud was more painful than the risk it took to blossom. The day came when the risk to remain tight in a bud was more painful than the risk it took to blossom. So tap into your own self-worth. Tapping into your own self-worth and trust amplifies trust and self-worth in yourself. It amplifies trust and self-worth in others. It amplifies trust and self-worth or trust and confidence in the circumstances and the conditions of your life. It amplifies trust and confidence in life itself and in the universe itself. So my beloved, this week, it's time to blossom. And so it is. So I invite our practitioners and our core council members to please stand and surround the sanctuary. I invite our band to take the platform once again. All right. So let's come together in consciousness right here and right now. I recognize that there is just this one power, this one presence, this one infinite, eternal source of all creation. It is wholeness. It is perfection. It is beauty. It is harmony. It is the harmony of the spheres. It is the beauty of the entire universe, the light of the universe, expanding, forever expanding, forever glowing, forever expressing itself in truth, as truth, with a capital T, it is glorious and magnificent. It is pure beauty and joy. It is divine right order and perfection that is all. And it is the wholeness. It is the totality. It is the all in all. It is the infinite. It is the one. And as I know that there is only this one, I know that I am one with it, that I am inseparable from it. The self, with a capital S, is the self that resides within me. The spirit, with a capital S, is the spirit that resides within me. The beauty, with a capital B, is the beauty that I am. The H, the harmony, with a capital H, is the harmony that I am. The P, with a capital P, the perfection that I am. And it is the I am that I am. Spirit is, I am. I am one with this, inseparable from it. For there truly is only one life, one power, one presence, one infinite, eternal, expressing itself here and now, as me, as each one gathered here this day. As all of creation. And so I speak my word here and now, knowing that there is no need for false pretenses. There is no need for the persona. There is no need for the roles and all these armors and protections and 
fancy dresses that we don ourselves in. There is only the one life, the one truth, the one power, the one presence expressing itself. No harm can come to this one. And each one of us is one with this one. So it is easy then to step forward in faith, in trust, in acceptance of simply what is. What is the totality of being? And in so doing, we step forth in freedom. We step forth in joy. We step forth in wholeness and perfection. We step forth into our highest yet to be. We step forth into living our vision now. We step forth into living our best lives now. We let go of all that has come before. We let go of past mistakes. We let go of poor choices. We let go of anything that has come before that no longer serves. And we simply say yes to being open and available to the spirit within, to the guidance within, to the love within. And we allow it to clothe us. We allow it to design us. We allow it to don the beautiful gold cloak of light, of love, of peace, of harmony, of joy. This is our truest and highest nature. And in remembering this, anything and everything is possible. And we live in oneness with the one. Drawn to the one who drew us. Expressing life, expressing love, expressing joy. I give thanks for this now. Give thanks for the awe and wonder, for the beauty that is, for the freedom that is ours now. I release this word into the law, knowing it is done, knowing it is so, and simply let it be. And together we affirm, and so it is. 